Sí. Good morning. We welcome you to morning worship at Mount Zion Church of Christ. We're excited to see everyone out today. It's a beautiful day and a great day to be together to worship God. I have several announcements, so I'm going to try to go through this speed edition this morning, so bear with me. As far as upcoming events, uh, keep in mind we are currently in our Wednesday night summer series. So this Wednesday we have Steve McCarley with us from the Franklin Church of Christ. He'll be speaking to us at 7, so we want to invite everybody back on Wednesday. Also on Saturday, August 21st, that will be the wedding ceremony of Hallie Willis and Brandon Hughes. It's at 3 o'clock here at the building. The reception will follow. There will also be a fish fry here at the church on the grounds on uh, Saturday, September 4th at 5 o'clock. So be inviting and reaching out into the community about that. Also today, if you are interested in participating in Lads to Leaders, that's a program that we have done in the past. Uh, We're looking to start that up again this year. Brian and Bobby are in charge of that. So if you have any interest and being a part of that ministry. Uh, Please stay after worship today. They're going to have a very, very short informational meeting in the fellowship hall right after worship. So again, that's today. Also on Sunday, August the 29th, there's going to be a birthday party for David. David turns 80 this month. So there's going to be food afterwards on that day. Uh, If you plan to stay, please let Brian and Bobby know this is not a potluck. The food will be furnished, so they just need to know if you plan to stay so they can plan for how much food they need. They're not requesting any gifts. Just bring your memories. And from what I hear, it's going to be kind of a time to roast David. So, um, So you've got a few weeks to be thinking. A lot of our kids started back to school this past week, and I received a thoughtful little note from Morgan Young this morning. It says, thank you for the school supplies, and it was made out to the church. 
Uh, but for those of you who don't know, we had somebody donate school supplies in secret. And I love that they did it in secret because the Bible talks about, you know, not doing your good works before people. But if anybody in this church, any of the kids, if you did not get school supplies, please get with me. We have some left over, and I can get those out to you. So we're thankful to God for the donation, and we're glad they're being put to good use. And Morgan, we are grateful for your appreciation. As far as our prayer needs, Crystal let me know her brother-in-law, Brent Young, he had a mini stroke on Thursday. He's still in the hospital. They're running more tests, and he is suffering currently with blurred vision. Tammy Phelps is home with pneumonia and one lung. Wanda Basham is home with a touch of pneumonia and one lung. Uh, Zoe and Wesley Johnson, they are both ill today with hand, foot, and mouth disease. Zoe also had her appendix removed. What day was that? Tuesday? Monday or Tuesday? Jeff and Mary Ziegler, they are getting tested for COVID tomorrow. And talking to the kids in class, I think at Warren East they had like 60-something kids go home because of, what's it called, Con contact tracing. So let's continue to be mindful of the situation that we're in. Uh, in the bulletin, Finley had been sick with hand, foot, mouth, but she's out with us today. We're grateful to see her. Don't forget, Carol's going to have shoulder replacement on August 16th. And Mary's brother, he is battling COVID in the Atlanta area. We also want to surround the Lyons family in prayers and support. Uh, Mackenzie Lyons, her uh, baby was stillborn this past week, and they had a private funeral out here. So our prayers and love go out to that family. Did I miss anything? Nothing. All right, uh, our scripture reading today comes from Luke 15, 21 through 24. And this is uh, coming from the story of the prodigal son. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Invite us all to focus on God and worship him with our all this morning. Morning. It's great to see everyone here this morning. Our first song is going to be page 599. I invite you to all join in. Oh, how sweet will be to meet the Lord when he comes in glory by and by. What a song of praise will be out for when he comes in glory by and by. How sweet, how sweet. When he comes in the sky, what joy, what joy, when he comes in glory by and by. We will have our robes all white as snow, when he comes in glory by and by. Oh, be ready with the Lord to go when he comes in glory by and by. How sweet, how sweet when he comes in the sky. What joy, what joy when he comes in glory by and by. I am longing for that happy day when he comes in glory by and by. For with him I hope to soar away 
when he comes in glory by and by. How sweet, how sweet, when he comes in the sky. What joy, what joy, when he comes in glory by and by. Next song this morning is going to be page 514. And after the song, we'll ask Greg Sanders to lead us in prayer. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way, telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way, I'm in the glory land way, I'm in the glory land way. For I'm in the glory land way. List to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Wanderers come home, oh, hasten to obey. For I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clear. For I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in it. Love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land. For I'm in the glory land way. Let us pray. Our Father art in heaven, we're so thankful, Father, for the blessings this day. Uh, we're thankful, Father, that you've allowed us to meet here on this first day of the week uh, to sing these songs of praise to thy name and to hear another lesson from your great and holy word. Father, we're thankful for each one that's in attendance here this morning. We pray, Father, that we'll open our hearts and minds. We pray that uh, we'll study in a way that you have us to. We pray, Father, that much good might come from this hour. Uh, Father, we're thankful this morning uh, for your son who came to this earth, lived and walked as man, and then died that cruel, cruel death on the cross of Calvary so that we may have hope uh, for eternal life with you. Father, we ask the blessings on this congregation of believers here at Mount Zion. We pray, Father, uh, for all the work that we do here. We, we're thankful, Father, uh, for uh, all the mission work that we do. We pray, Father, for the work that we're supporting in the Ukraine. We ask your blessings on those congregations this morning. We just pray, Father, you'd be with them, bless them in the way that they need to be blessed this morning. Uh, Father, we ask you this morning to be with Brother David as he stands before us. We pray that you would give him a remembrance of the things that he studied. We pray that that we as his audience will give him our undivided attention. We just pray, Father, that much good might come from this hour. Uh, Father, we ask your blessings this morning on the sick that were mentioned. We know we have many of our number who are suffering this morning. We just pray, Father, your blessings on them. We pray, Father, that you would restore them uh, back to their normal health and their normal walks of life. We pray Father, especially for the Lions family this morning, in their time of mourning, uh, we pray, Father, we know that you're the, good, the giver of all good. Uh, we trust, Father, that you might surround them this morning 
uh, that you might comfort them as only you know how. Father, we pray now that you be with us uh, through the remainder of this hour. Uh, we pray, Father, if there's any here this morning who have never named thy name, or any here this morning who have strayed away, that something might be said or done this morning uh, that might prick their heart and they might decide that today is the day uh, that they need to give their life unto you. Father, be with us. Forgive us when we fall short. And finally, in heaven, save us. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Next song this morning will be page 218. I invite you to all stand. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer When from this earth I free, I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know. Stands a place prepared for me. A home, a house not made with hands, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know. Eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer Good morning everybody we're happy to have everybody here and got a good number this morning even with all the ones that we have got absent so we are glad you're here this morning uh, in our Sunday school class this morning we were talking about how the uh, Israelites murmured we don't use that word much today but it means griping and complaining that's really what it's about uh, and they did a lot of it and I guess I'm doing a little of it this morning I'm uh, griping and complaining because I've got a bad cold I'm sure you can hear it uh, and I uh, would like to get over but I've had this thing for about three weeks and I can't seem to shake it so I hope that you will put up with me uh, this morning we'll do the best we can with it so I want to warn you ahead of time I'm just not 100% today if if I ever am, <laughs> I don't know that I ever am, but um, today we're going to be talking about the father of the prodigal son and just who that is. 
Uh, and I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning than I usually do. I'm going to start with a prayer. And I'm going to ask Ryan to come up here and lead it. And i got a purpose for doing this. So Ryan, if you would come up here and offer us up a prayer. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you that you are our Father. We are amazed by everything that you are and how you work. Father, we look back and think about how you have worked and what you are currently doing. And Father, we know as your followers that we have a lot of hope. We can look forward to what you're going to do. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for everything that you bless us with in our life. You sustain us. You shield us. You deliver us. Father, we just pray that we focus our lives on you. We pray that our worship today is pleasing to you and about you. We pray that we don't get caught up in the distractions of this world. So much is pulling at our attention. The devil is alive and at work. We pray that you'll help us to just not get caught up in his schemes. We pray that you will help us to be on fire for you. Be with David as he speaks to us this morning. We pray that this message is from you and convicts our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. As I said, I had a, a reason for doing that. And basically the reason that I want him to do that is I know how that he starts his prayer and I hope that you noticed that I'm sure you did this morning how he starts his prayer um, and I'm um, certainly glad that he does do it like he does because we just can't say enough about who God is and what he does for us we just can't say enough about it. Um, and I saw a little poll here a while back about this story. And it was interesting to me, they said that Jesus told uh, about 40 parables all through the four Gospels, about 40 different parables, and that the story of the prodigal son was best known. People know that story better than any other story that Jesus ever told. And you got to wonder why. Why is that one? Because, wow, he did so many good stories and everything, and we use them all the time. Uh, 2,000 years later, why is this one uh, uh, more in the remembrance of people than any other story? And so I got to going back and looking and out over the years that I have preached. I've preached on this subject many, many times. Uh, and I've, I've spoken about uh, the boy himself, the one that we call the prodigal son. I have a whole sermon just on him or some aspect of him. And I guess that I've preached the prodigal son maybe a dozen different ways just in his part. And then I've also preached it from the standpoint of the older son, how he was jealous of his brother and how as Christians that that's not how God wants us to be. And especially when somebody is being restored. That if we've got it in us that we're jealous of somebody that's being restored or we're saying to ourselves or we're murmuring, well, I don't know why everybody's paying attention to him. I've been going to church here 40 years and nobody ever pays any attention to me. That's murmuring and complaining. Instead of being jealous of the person that is being restored, we ought to show our greatest happiness to that person. So I preach it like that sometimes. But I can't think of but this one sermon that I preached it, according to my notes here, I preached it in 2012. So uh, if you remember this, you've got a better memory than I do if you were here in 2012. And I wanted to preach it on the father of the prodigal son. Uh, and I can think that if there is anybody who is qualified to tell this story about a father, 
It's got to be Jesus himself. And, and I tell you what I really believe. I believe that in this story right here, the father that he's talking about is his father. I really believe that. He's talking about his own father. Uh, and one of the reasons that I believe that, I, I, I think that while he was in the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden, Garden of Gethsemane, I'm sorry. That's this cold, that's what did that. Uh, while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he talked to his father, <coughs> maybe just like you and I would all talk to our father. And I would like for you to think this morning about your father. Um, if I ask this morning, uh, I'd like to see a show of hands. Uh, I wouldn't do that because it embarrassed some of us about what our relationship with our father was. And uh, I think that most of you that know me uh, would say about my father, those of you that remember my father, and by the way, he's, he's been dead. This will be 25 years this month. That tractor turned over on him and killed him. Uh, but I remember those things about when I was growing up and... Uh, some of those things that I had with my father wasn't always pleasant. I, I thought I had the best daddy in the world, and I still believe that, but I'm telling you right now, there could be times that it wasn't real pleasant for one reason or another. Uh, and I think that there are times today that God is very displeased with us. I know that when I sin, that God is very displeased with me. Um, and I know that there are consequences to sin I understand that and there was consequences in the household that I grew up in if I did something that was wrong and if it was really wrong I could expect consequences because that's what my father did and that's what he was uh, but I look at this story and I see all the, the positive aspects of, of this father uh, and I think Man, this is the perfect father. Uh, and there's only one perfect father. My daddy was a great guy, but he wasn't perfect. And if he were here today, he wouldn't let you tell me, uh, me tell you that he was perfect. Because he was human just like you and I were. He made mistakes. Uh, but this father, I can't find any fault at all with him. And I put some things down around did for me on the board up here that describes him and I can't find any fault at all and there is no human earthly father that doesn't have some faults one of the memories that I have of my father and I don't know why we remember negative things sometimes but my daddy gave me a whipping one time for something that my brother did my brother didn't own up to it. Now, Brian, I know that never did happen between you and Michael, but I got a whipping one time, and Philip should have got the whipping. He should have got it. And I tried to tell my daddy before he whipped me, and I was a big boy. I was probably 13, 14 years old. You would think, you know, maybe getting to that age where you don't whip a child anymore, daddy never did. He didn't go for that. He, he, didn't. he didn't know there was a time limit on it, you know, like... You can get your driver's license when you're 16 and you can vote when you're 18. He didn't go for that. Uh, but I tried to tell him before he whipped me and I said, wait a minute, Daddy, wait a minute, Daddy, wait, 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 wait. He didn't wait. He whipped me. And then later on he found out that my brother did it. So how should anybody react to that? How would your daddy react to that? Would he say, oh, David, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I made a terrible mistake. I really thought you was guilty. That wasn't in my daddy to do that. And he wasn't perfect. He never apologized. What he did say was, well, we'll just let that one count for something that you got away with. <laughs> and I didn't think that is right. <laughs> uh, but what he did do that, it, that pleased me extremely is Philip got his. And I'm glad he got his because he deserved it. But he, my daddy wasn't a perfect person as much as I loved him. 
But this God uh, that ran led us in prayer to a while ago is a perfect God. Uh, and I believe that that's who Jesus is talking about when he depicts this story right here. And I want to I want to give you a few things about this God that I think is so awesome. That's Brian's word. I got that from him. And, and mighty and great. And that's why I wanted him to lead the prayer for us this morning because he can do that better than I can. Uh, this father had a heart of generosity. He was a generous person. And here's how we know that. Notice what he says. He said a certain man, now that's, he says man, but we know who he's talking about, uh, said, had two sons and the younger said to his father, Father, give me that portion of goods which falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. How would your father have acted, reacted to that? Can you see me going to my daddy, those that knew my daddy and saying when I was 19 years old or 17 years old or whatever it was, Daddy, I want mine right now. I'm fixing to go out into the world and I want mine right now. I don't think I have to tell you what his answer would be. And this father right here was generous to the degree the Bible says he divided unto them his lady, the oldest boy didn't even ask for it, but he divided them anyway. And I want you to notice something else. Under Jewish law, dating all the way back to the law of Moses, the 759 laws that we were talking about recently, now there was a law of primogeniture. Now that's a big word, but it means prime means first, and gene means seed. So. It was a law of first seed, and it simply meant that the oldest boy got the birthright. And that meant that he got a double portion than anybody else. So, and that was still going on during this time. So when he divided unto them his living, the oldest boy got $2 for every dollar that the younger boy got. What's he got to gripe about, murmur about? Um... But certainly he didn't like that part. But he, his father was generous. We know that he went ahead and did this at this time. <coughs> and he gave it to his son, knowing that he was going to go away from home, and knowing that probably what he's going to do is waste it and squander it. Knowing that he was going to do that. This, this guy wasn't dumb, this father that he's talking about right here. And I want us to know that in James chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible tells us that God gives us gifts constantly. He doesn't just do it one time and quit. Here's your birthright. I don't want to ever see you again. If you're not going to stay here and mind me, I don't care what you do. That's not the kind of God that we've got. He's going to always be our Father, and He's going to always be a generous Father. And to the degree that not only does He give us all of him while we're here on this earth, he's prepared to do that for eternity. I don't believe any of us here can even comprehend what that really means to us. God loves us so much that he's not only going to take care of us while we're here on this earth, but when this life is over, he's going to keep on doing it. If we're his, truly his child. And then another thing that I see about this father uh, I, I see him as being a kind person. Uh, my father, uh, I think he was one of the kindest people that I've ever met. And people that knew my daddy, Maurice, you knew my daddy. Uh, he was one of the kindest people that I ever saw to everybody but me. I don't, I don't remember him ever... Now, I'm not murmuring here. I'm just telling you the facts. I don't. I, the, the kindness part of it, that wasn't part of Daddy's personality uh, as it related to me. I heard people say today, you know, you need to be friends with your children. Uh, and I've got a whole different take on that. Parents, I don't think that you're put here to be friends with your children. You're put here to be an authority figure. You're put here to be to perform discipline. You're, here, you're put here to guide them, to teach them. You're not put here to be friends with them, BFFs. 
That's not what you're here to do. I don't see this father as being a friend so much to his son, but I do believe that he was kind to him in the degree that he was kind to everybody else. My my father was kind to so many people, and he did a lot for a lot of people. He was kind to them. But the word kindness in our relationship, I don't think really applied. It wasn't there. It was a different relationship altogether. And the reason that I think this about this, the son who left had nothing against his father. He didn't leave home because he said, my father ain't kind to me. That's not why he left home. He was good to him. He was kind to him. That's not why he left home. Uh, and there were no hard words at their parting. Did you notice that? Did you notice that this father said, uh, as this boy was leaving home, that he didn't say something like, okay, old boy, you think you know what you're doing and you're hitting the road on your own accord. Don't come back here crying to me if it don't work out. What would your father have said? I came in from Western one afternoon. Never did like school. I'll be totally honest. Never did like school. And I got tired of going to school at Western. And I came home one afternoon and uh, my father was sitting in the house by the fire and I said, Daddy, I have decided to quit school at Western and I'm fixing to join the Army. Uh, and I think he talked kindly to me. I expected he was going to blow up and tell me what he thought, but he didn't do that. He fooled me. And he said, Son, I think that's a terrible mistake. I don't think you ought to do that. I said, Daddy, my mind is made up and that's what I'm going to do. And he said, okay, if that's what you want to do. But you know, he didn't say to me, don't you ever come back here. He never said that to me. And I look at this father right here and I see that he is a kind father. And not only kind, but in some of these terms, obviously, right, are overlapping, but he was a good father. And I think that he was a good father because... Uh, he had servants and I believe that he treated his servants well he was kind to his servants he was good to them he had many servants uh, and he must have been good to them because I see this boy when he was in this foreign country in a hawk pen doing something he didn't want to be doing he said I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy servants he must treat his servants awful good must treat them good or he wouldn't want to go back as a servant not as a son but just as a servant so he must have gone back uh, uh, would have gone back for that reason a servant so he was he was generous he was kind he was good uh, and liberal he was liberal to the degree that he gave his son freedom I, I always wonder when I read these things and I never know how old was he when he did this I know how I remember how old I was right I was 19 and I had the world by the tail. And I went into Uncle Sam's army and I started finding out how much I didn't know. Been to Western a year and a half and I should know something, right? And after three years when I came home, I was surprised how much my daddy learned while I was gone. I really was. But see, it was me that did the learning. And I thought about this boy. I don't know how old he was, 17, 18, 19, 25. I don't know how old he was. But I know that his father gave him his freedom and he didn't force him to come back. Did you notice that he didn't go after him? He didn't tell his family or his servants. I don't know where he went, but he went into a far country and I'm going over and I'm going to see if I can find him and drag him home. He don't have any business over there. And if he'd known he'd been feeding hogs, which was a no-no for a Jewish boy, it would have been all the worse. But he didn't drag him home. He gave him his freedom. And he gives us freedom of choice. God doesn't make us do anything. In a few minutes, we're going to sing the invitation song. And I know that 
there couldn't be a crowd of 95 people that there's not somebody in this group this morning that probably needs to be restored or become a Christian to start with. But God ain't going to make you. God's not going to stand over you and whisper in your ear and say, you need to do this. you got to do this. I'm your God. If you ever want to be saved, you better obey. God doesn't do that. He doesn't come after you. It's your choice. He gives you the freedom. And then, here's what I love so much about this father. He was hopeful. I know that he'd been waiting for all this time because when we read this story and we see what is going on about this son, we see this father and the scripture tells us uh, how his father acted. But when he arose, and, he arose and came to his father and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. How did his father see him a great way off? Must have been because he's looking for him. Must have been because he was hopeful. He, he saw him and he had compassion and he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. And that's what a father's supposed to do. And that's how God is with us. He's generous, he's kind, he's good, he's liberal, and he's hopeful. God is hopeful that we're going to do the right thing. Our parents have probably taught us what the right thing is to do. Sometimes we don't do it, and sometimes we shut our ears, and sometimes we turn our heads and we turn our backs. But God is hopeful that we will make the right choice in this life and that we'll do what he wants us to do. God was hopeful that the son would return. He wanted him to return. He was watching for him to turn, to return. He saw him coming. And then when he got there, his father didn't jump on him and say, where you been? What you been doing? What are you doing coming back here? Didn't work out. You weren't smart as you thought you was. You don't say any of that. He kisses him. My mama used to kiss me a whole lot. <laughs> My daddy didn't do much kissing. That wasn't a, a, a boy boy thing. He didn't do a whole lot of that. That, that was my. I was in the service for three years. And the three years that I was there, my mama always wrote the letters to me. And boy, did I, I wouldn't miss mail call for nothing. I would, remember that, Jeff, when you was in there, how you was waiting for a letter, mail call? I never did expect one from my daddy. My daddy didn't write letters. He'd say, Georgie, tell him about so-and-so. And she would write in the letter what my daddy wanted me to know. But as far as him doing the writing, he didn't. And he wouldn't kiss me. But he'd hug me. And this father right here, he kissed his son. I think we're better at that than we used to be a generation ago or two generations ago. I think we're better than we used to be at that. And then I see that he's compassionate. Uh, his generosity was multiplied there's no question about it uh, and he accepts with open arms us with his compassion it was a kiss of love there's no question about that and he cares when we come to him that's compassion and then last of all, and this may be to us the most important thing that we could derive out of this whole list, is that he was forgiven. I want you to notice something right here. Because the Bible says this. Now the elder son, verse 25, the elder son was in the field as he came out of the house. He heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father has killed the fatted calf. And because he's received him safe and said, And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and, and entreated him. And the son said, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I thy commandment at any time. But as soon as this thy son was come, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. 
He's devoured your living with harlots and you're going to treat him this way? Forgiven. Forgiven. There was no forgiveness in his brother, but there was so much forgiveness in God. God is ready to forgive us. When we repent and we turn to God, there is not an unforgiven bone in God's body. He restores us and he puts us back in a rightful place. There's much more that we could say, but I want us to look at the results this morning. First of all, it made the father happy. Tickled to death, his son was home. And it made everybody else around him happy. It doesn't say anything about his mother here. But I know if she was on the scene, she was happy. It made all the servants happy. They were tickled to death that he would come home. It made everybody happy but the older son. It should have made him happy. And those of us today that are, in, that are Christians, it ought to make us happy when someone comes home. We ought to be the happiest people it is because that's our brother. There's no room for unhappiness and there's no room for forgiveness. And this is the kind of father that we have as Ryan started out with us in the prayer this morning. This is the kind of father that we have. All of us who are fathers in this life, we fall short. Uh, but this is the Father that we can look to for our example. If you're here this morning and if you're in a hog pen in a foreign country, you need to get out of that hog pen. You need to say, I will go to my Father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Take me as one of thy servants. Now, if that's who you are this morning, that's why we sing this invitation song. I hope you'll come while we stand. Gabe, what we sing. I've been to Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Oh, your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you 
wash in the blood of the Lamb. To repair minds for the Lord's Supper this morning, we're going to sing the first verse of page 536. <coughs> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross with a dearest and best for a word of the sinners was slain, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a As you get ready to take for the Lord's Supper, we ask that you have your mind clear and free of thoughts and not worried about what we're going to have for, for lunch or work tomorrow morning or anything else but the task ahead. So will you all bow with me, please? Lord, as we get ready to partake of this loaf that represents your son's body as he died and suffered upon the cross so that we can have a chance at heaven with thee, we ask that we're worthy enough to take it and that we do it in remembrance of him and in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Will y'all bow with me for the cup? Lord, we come before you gathered around this table thanking you for, for your son again who died upon the cross. As we get ready to partake of this cup, which represents his blood that was shed upon the cross, we hope that we can take it in a well-pleasing well manner unto thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We all bow for the offering, please. Lord, as we come to another portion of, the, of our worship, which is the offering that you've given us so many talents and abilities to go out and make money for our family, Lord. And as we can give a small portion of thanks and gratitude back to you and to the church, Lord, we ask that you be with all the elders and the people here that oversee the money that it can help uplift your kingdom, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We will close this morning with first and last verse, page 545. After this song, last brother Barry Basham believes in our closing prayer. I invite you to all stand again. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If 
heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land will live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world